Brothers and sisters of Christ Church, good morning. God bless you in this. Thank you. I didn't think that I would ever get a welcome back. I, I, I thought maybe if I were for gone for two consecutive Sundays, you'd get used to me being away and say, ah, well, forget him. What's your name again? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Jake Steele. I'm the pastor of Christ Church, and it's awesome to be back in the fold uh, after uh, a week's vacation. I don't... I can't recall, it's been at least a, a year and a half that I have taken consecutive Sundays, and it was great uh, to be away and to spend some time with family and extended family uh, at the beach. We traveled to Florida and were in Destin for the first time and saw that Emerald Coast. It's unlike anything I'd ever seen it, it, or, or, or imagined in my mind. It was great to be away, but it was also great to come back, and it's awesome to be able to share this space with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, I would be remiss uh, if, if I did not recognize uh, the work and the ministries uh, of, of teams that are charged with the responsibility of ordering worship here and preparing for all of uh, my, my brothers that preached over the past two weeks. I want to recognize Reverend Dr. Mark, Mike, Mike Linger and uh, Luke Costanzo. They filled in so nicely, and I just want to share my gratitude. And you can join me by giving a Christ Church thank you to all of those. And now you got me back. Oh, some things just uh, are deflating. But uh, I, uh, I want to I want to welcome all of those who were who were joining us, maybe for the very first time this morning via live stream uh, at a distance, in state or out of state, uh, uh, north or south, east or west. We are delighted that you've uh, tuned in this morning. You may be watching retrospectively uh, through this recording. We are glad that you're with us. My name is Jake Steele. I'm the pastor of this church. And all of us, we make a practice of saying no matter who you are or where you're from or how you got here or what it is that's got you, in the name of Christ Jesus, indeed, you are welcome in this place. And, and, and we're, we're going we're gonna, to uh, enter into a, a word that I think is, is challenging. We live in challenging times and you'd almost want a challenging word. But I want to put us in a position first to be able to assume a posture of prayer because many of us, have come into this space. Many of you were in, are in a space, whether it's this house of worship or your house of worship, burdened by something with a heavy weight of something that you need to release in order to receive. And so the bell choir is here and we're going to receive our prelude. And a prelude is simply a pathway to prayer where we can prepare for what the Lord has for us this morning. Uh, enter into this time of prayer and I'll open us in prayer after the prelude. Let's use this time to to prepare for whatever it is that the Lord has for us this morning. Let's do that.
So for those here, yes. For those of you who are here and those of you who are uh, joining us right now live stream, uh, before we progress in our worship, will you join me in, in, in a word of prayer? Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. It wasn't promised to us, and we've come off uh, at least a, a year and a half of circumstances, of a, a shared experience, Lord, that has, has made us acutely aware of how precious moments are and how fragile life is. And we don't take this time for granted. And so for those of us who are either in our homes right now receiving this or, or in this sanctuary, we give ourselves to you now with whatever we've brought in here, uh, the, the residue from the previous week, whatever might serve as an obstacle between us and the relationship with you, whatever might uh, prevent or stunt our growth on a path of discipleship, Lord, we ask that you remove it now. T -t Take away any preoccupation of the past, of the present, or perhaps of the future, so, so that we might be fully yours this moment. Some of us have come with anxiety. Others have come with, with trepidation and uncertainty about their day. Uh, maybe some of us have come frustrated of, over something that was said or done. Maybe some of us come in celebration for uh, the, the obvious ways that you've been able to move in our lives. And so whether it's celebration or trepidation or frustration, we come honest, Lord, and we dishonor, we, we dishonor the relationship that we have with you to put up a face or a facade. We come as ourselves, our full selves, and we devote ourselves to you in this space, Lord, so that, as I said before, we can receive what we need to receive, that we can relinquish what we need to relinquish as a means of responding the way that we need to respond as your people. Lord, the rest of the world, and starting with us, need your word this morning. Have your way. We pray it all, that it be glorifying in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I'd like our young ones to come. Uh, the, there are a couple up here. There are some in, in our congregation. I know many of uh, perhaps joining us online right now. Um, I'd like to spend some time uh, with you. And as they do, uh, friends, if you're, if you're new uh, to Christ Church, we, uh, we deliberately and intentionally and actively create a space in our worship uh, for our young ones uh, because they're not just the future of our church, they are our present. And, and they're living in, in ways that speak of God's kingdom work. And we always honor uh, this space and are delighted for times to be able to uh, equip them and uh, to, to live into an identity of a Jesus follower with them. Hi, friends. It is great to see you. I'm going to sit down here so uh, all, all of you can see. Um, I, I brought something with me. You know what this is. Uh, this is a, a big... I brought something with me. You did? I got a, a, a big, tasty bottle of water. Now... I need you to help me with this be, be, because let's pretend that I'm confused about the purpose of this water. We all know what the purpose of this bottled water is. Is it, is it to simply look at it? That's not the purpose, is it? Although you could if you wanted to. Yeah. Well, is, is the purpose maybe uh, just to, to carry around? It feels good in my hand. Is, it, is the purpose to carry it? No. Uh, is, is the purpose maybe to display it somewhere, like, like the altar flowers or uh, anything else we have here in our chancel area? Is the purpose of the water bottle to display, even though it maybe would look nice? No, that's not the purpose, is it? What's the purpose of the bottle of water? To drink it, to consume it, to take it in. The reason that the water is with us and the reason that the water was bottled it, it is for us to take in, Right? There's no other reason, even though we could think of other reasons, less worthy reasons of the waters. But, you know, let's pretend, too, that, man, I, I really, I'm so thirsty, and, and I want to I take a drink of, of this water. But, but you know what? Sometimes these things are hard to open. Have you ever had a hard time opening up a bottle? Yeah, sometimes these can be, can be difficult. 
And, 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 and sometimes, you know, I couldn't do it on my own strength. I can't open it on my own power. And sometimes we need help from things not us, from people that aren't us, maybe someone, something stronger. And, and so we have, some, we have some things from the outside that help us. Who knows what this is? You ever seen this before? What's that? A bottle opener. Yeah, and, and see, it comes in, in different sizes for different containers or different jars. And if I needed help to open this, I can use this by taking this, squeezing the top of the bottle, and turning it. And look, it opened for me. And what I had trouble with, I don't have trouble with anymore. I, I can get this water. Oh, take a nice drink. And enjoy the water for what it was meant, right? Did that make you thirsty? <laughs> There's water for you if you want to raise your hand and have an usher bring you one. But you know what? Our faith is like that. It, it, it's, it's a lot like this example. Oftentimes we have a hard time wrapping our minds around the, the purpose of, of, of Jesus. Why Jesus came. And, and Jesus didn't come to be studied Jesus didn't just come to be listened to. Our faith in the Lord doesn't exist so that we can just carry it around because it feels nice. Or our faith doesn't exist for us to just simply put on a shelf for, for others to see from a distance. You know, our, our faith in Jesus is meant to be taken in, to, to, to be a part of us. You know, that water disappeared. It's, no, it, it, it's, it's not in the bottle anymore. It's in me. And, and the reason Jesus came close was to become so close that he is a part of you, is in you, and you are in him. But sometimes we have a hard time understanding. Sometimes we have a hard, uh, a hard time comprehending this thing called faith. You know, what does it mean to walk as a follower of Jesus? What does it mean to be a disciple? What does it mean to be a part of a faith community or a church? What does it mean to live like Jesus in my, in my daily life? with whatever I do. Some of us are going back to school real soon. Raise your hand if you're going, have gone back to school or will go back to school. Yeah, in the coming days, we're going to enter into a new experience and we're called to shine God's light. But sometimes it's hard for us to understand this thing called faith in, in, in the Bible, the scriptures, and what it means to be part of a community. And we need help sometimes. Like I needed help for this bottle. We, we need help understanding the Lord. And it, and it takes sometimes being with somebody and asking questions to say, you know what? Uh, pastor or brother or sister of this church, I'm having a hard time grasping this. And thank goodness we have this thing called the, uh, the, the church, a family called the church to help us understand and the scriptures to read to help us understand and, and, and to have something from the outside come in and help us open something that we couldn't have, all, couldn't have understood or opened on our own. And you know what? I learned so much from you. You helped me understand what it means to live into a life that follows Jesus. Some of you are the most grace-filled and, and open and inquisitive and curious people I've ever met. And, and, and it takes that to learn what it means to grow as a follower of Jesus. We lean on one another. We lean on our church family. We lean on the word, the scriptures. We, we, we come to Sunday school in small groups because we need help sometimes to understand. And I'm thankful for that. Jesus doesn't want to be a part of your life just to simply for, for us to carry around. Uh, for, for, for people to be able to see at a distance. Jesus came so that we might experience salvation, grace, in his name, new life. And you know what? When we take the Lord in, when we make the Lord, not just a part, but all of who we are, it, it changes the way we not only feel, but the way we live and the way others see. I want to encourage you as you, go, as, you prepare, as you prepare to go back to school, all of our educators who in this place, in this community, uh, would, would be able to, to shine God's light and, and to it, it expand the kingdom and people of God in ways that we couldn't before. What I'm going to ask you to do is something different because this week we're on the cusp of a major step that a lot of us are taking to go back to school, a new experience, new people, new teachers, a new environment. I want, I want you kids to stand and rather than to pray with you, this church, this faith family is going to pray for you. So will you stand for, for me just, just a little bit? And poor Marley, look, at you've got a new boot. You've experienced something new. Was it, is it broken or sprained? Sprained? Ah. Does it hurt? 
Yeah, I see that. I see that. Well, we uh, we'll, we'll pray for you, for for you as well, as well as you recover. Church, I'd like you to stand. And in in, in solidarity, I'd like you to extend a hand to these little ones, and, and also uh, all of our little ones who are who are joining us online right now. In agreement, we're going to pray for our kids as they anticipate, anticipate new measures and new environments, new opportunities to shine the light of God. Let's, let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this space right here. For, for us to pour into the lives of our young ones and for our young ones to pour into us. And, and we realize how it is that your power moves among us. We, 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 we understand, but help us to know more fully that a life in you, a faith in you, doesn't, doesn't exist for us to put on a shelf. It, it isn't just to be displayed neatly on one particular day of the week. You call us to take you in, Lord. And so as our children, as these gathered here in afar, online, in-state and out-of-state, who are connected to this faith community, as they and we take steps into new opportunities, new environments, new classrooms, new experiences that you would enable us, Lord, to reflect your love and your grace and your hope and peace in a way that maybe nobody's seen before and thereby through experiencing us, through relating with us, they might know something more of you and your great love for them. Remind us of your love for us and how close you came to show us just how much that love is. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, friends. Um, kids can go back uh, to, to their spaces, and I'm going to ask the church to continue standing. We're going uh, to engage in our opening, our opening hymn. Uh, nursery care is available, too, for uh, kids uh, ages up to th three, I, I believe. Um, we'll continue our worship, church. Uh, with, the, with the wonderful words of life, I'm going to ask that you sing. You'll find that if you brought your hymn books with you on page 600 or on the screens before you. Let's join in. seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to jump right into our, our word this morning. I'm excited to, to share it because in it, I, I believe, uh, are, is a richness and a relevance, a realness uh, of, 
of life in these words. And if we can put ourselves in a posture, uh, absent anything that we might consider doing after this, or, or absent anything that, that we might have brought into this place, hung up over what happened or what somebody said, if we can put ourselves in a spiritual, emotional posture to say, Lord, whatever you want to bring me this morning, your, your, your servant's available to listen, to, to, to receive, but not just to receive, but to live into. Uh, I, I want to bring you uh, to a word that you find tucked away in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. Uh, if you brought your Bibles with you, I encourage you to follow along. Uh, you'll, you'll find them on the screen before you. Uh, but a few weeks ago, I, I, I preached a, a sermon uh, called Have a Seat. And it's the instructions that Jesus gave uh, to all those who followed Jesus out to a desolate place. And they asked Philip how they were going to feed them all. And a miracle occurred. Uh, they, they were fed and they didn't even ask to be fed. But the Lord found ways of feeding them in less than favorable places. Uh, and, and this is kind of a continuation of that, just to kind of put you in context uh, about where we are in the scriptures. But, but I want to bring you to the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 6. And for the sake of clarity, I'll read from verse 56 all the way to verse 69. Hear these words. Jesus starts by saying, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood Abide in me, and I in them. And just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, and not like what your ancestors ate, and they died, but, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. And he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult <laughs> to say it lightly, to put it lightly. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But, but Jesus, they didn't say it out loud, but Jesus being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Does this trip you up? Is this a stumbling block for you? Then, then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It's the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you are some who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, for, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. And get this, church, because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with them. And so Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? What are, what are you going to do? What's it going to be with you? Do you also wish to go away, and, and then Simon Peter answered in a way that we just sang. He said, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of life. You, you have the words of eternal life. What an answer. We have come, not right away, not instantaneously, but by virtue of walking with you. We've been able to witness enough. We have come to believe. And know that you are the Holy One of God. And that's where we stop this morning. I offer you a rich, a relevant, and real word of God for a living people of God. And those of us here say, <clears throat> I, I want to bring you back to a specific verse within the scriptures that paints a canvas, or that is a canvas on the portrait that I'm going to paint, a broader picture. The scripture says that he, meaning Jesus, said these things while he was teaching, not in the privacy of someone's sofa, and, and, and not while he was walking casually down the street so that maybe someone might misinterpret what he said. The scriptures said he said these things while he was teaching in the what? Help me. In the synagogue. Let's have that one. In the synagogue at Capernaum. He, he said these things while he was teaching in church, and he didn't stutter. 
And, and so for all those of us who often ponder what's for chow after church, here's Jesus' challenge. Mind the menu. <laughs> Mind the menu. In, 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 in case you're looking at something and you don't quite find it appetizing, there's not much on the menu. Mind the menu. There aren't many options and you're going to have to make up your mind about what you do with me. Let's pray. Lord, as we come into this place and we receive this word, we ask that you feed us. Feed us uniquely. Fill us to overflowing in a unique way. And we don't just ask consumeristically that you feed us and you fill us for the sake of being fed and filled so that we can go about our routine. We ask that you feed us and fill us as a means of freeing us to live out what we've received and flesh it fully as your body. Have your way, great God that you are. We ask that you do what only you can do. We thank you ahead of time for what you'll do in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go ahead and name the elephant in the room. This is kind of an uncomfortable text. <laughs> Don't you think this is kind of uncomfortable, what Jesus says to his disciples? And, and not just because of what Jesus says, it's actually uncomfortable because of where he says it. And when? The timing couldn't have been more terrible. Why? Be because Jesus' ministry has just reached a critical mass. Don't you remember how many of those started to follow after he fed them? They've just come off of the feeding, not just of the 5,000, then count women and children. There were much more than that. His ministry had just reached a critical mass. His acclaim was accelerating. He was trending on Twitter. His social media was blowing up. Things couldn't have been better. His popularity had propelled him to a place where people were proclaiming his power, which was great news. Now, it was great news for someone who was supposed to lead a revolt and to release us from Rome so that life can go back to the way that we want it to go. So that life can go back to normal. So, so life can go back to the way that we envisioned it, the way that we want it to go, and we can go on living the life that we had in mind. Seems kind of similar. Kind of resonates with us a bit, don't you think? We want to go back to the way life should be, and we can go on living the life we had in mind, and now, because of what he says, it's messed up. It's all messed up. And let me ask, as, as, as I transition, have you ever had, you ever have something in mind and it didn't match what God had in store? Maybe, maybe in the past year and a half, maybe even more recent than that, you had something in mind that didn't match or hasn't matched what God has in store. When those two things conflict, it's very difficult for us as a people of faith. It's very, it's very difficult. It causes friction in us as followers, does it not? Brothers and sisters listening online, have you, have, you, have you ever felt that tension? Something that you had in mind for your life that didn't match up with what God had in store? Has life, and I'll be more specific, has the Lord ever thrown you for a loop and, and, you, and left you uncertain about your ability to take the next step in faith. And maybe there's some of us seated in these pews or on our couches at home saying, it's happening right now. The Lord has thrown me for a loop. And, and, and I just don't know how I can muster the strength to take the next step because life has become so uncertain or my situation has become so unstable. I had something in mind that's different from what the Lord has in store, it seems. And we go back to the word. I mean, did you hear what this so-called Messiah muttered? 
I mean, I thought it was swell when he was serving up bread, but now he's serving up himself. He said, have me, consume me, eat my flesh and drink my blood. What? Do you know how strange that sounded? Then it sounds strange to us now, for those of us can see retrospectively, but I like it when he was serving up bread, but now he's serving up himself. The Lord was leading in a way that was drastically different. And it's difficult, brothers and sisters, to stay committed when things aren't comfortable. Guess what? As he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, church got challenging. And I would like to believe that in some ways, while you're in church, you're challenged by this word. To, to live and to lead and to love differently. Sometimes that doesn't feel very comfortable. They weren't. Church got challenging. The teaching got tough. And guess what? They turned. They turned. Scripture says, if I can have that, the, the, this, this, uh, that, that piece of Scripture, and they need your help with this. You read the highlighted section. I'll read the unhighlighted section. It says, when... Not a few, not a select number, not just a little. When what? Yeah. Of his disciples heard it, they said, ah, I don't know about this. It seems difficult. It seems, uh, no pun intended, a little tough to swallow. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? And then in later verses, it says this. Because of this, because of what he said, because of what he was taught, because, he, because of what he was teaching, because of what he was asking them to do, because of this, it says, many. not a lot, not, 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 not just a few, not a select number, but many of his disciples heard, and because of it, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. People were departing in droves. And, and you know, uh, I was studying this text last week, and sometimes I record my internal thoughts as I'm studying the text because it resonates oftentimes with maybe the way you've engaged it. But I, but, but I was studying the gospel this past week, and I thought to myself when I came to this point, when many disciples turned and they started leaving at, at such an inconvenient time, at a time when Jesus' ministry had reached a critical mass and everything was good, and they thought life was going to go back to the way they wanted, and they could go on living the way that they were supposed to be living, they started departing in, in droves. And I thought to myself, dad, gone. And by the way, all of those of you who are listening online up north or out west, daggone is a southern euphemism. It replaces a word that might not be more very appropriate to say in worship. But I said, daggone. Talk about, talk about a sermon that went south. Jesus is. That's also a southern euphemism. Jesus is. Jesus went from 5,000 to 50 in five seconds. That's not going to be good for the charge conference paperwork. You'd have thought that he hit on a hot button like human sexuality or politics or some other social ill, but no, none of that. Listen to this. Rather, the reason why people started to depart in droves, to leave in mass, wasn't for any of that. It was because of the invitation to intimacy. The invitation to intimacy shrunk the movement. Who'd have thought that the invitation that Jesus offered to come closer, to come way closer than you ever did before, would cause others to uncommit, to decommit, but it happens, does it not? When you find yourself in less than favorable conditions or situations you can't wrap your mind around, especially as a follower of Jesus, that I had something in mind that you didn't seem to have in store and you're asking me to do something that feels foreign, Jesus says in those times, come closer to me. Come closer than you ever did before. 
how much that causes friction in faith and followers distance themselves. And of those that were seen walking away, I can almost imagine them muttering something like, dude, I was, I was fine to follow at a distance, and, and I was down when he did the whole water-to-wine thing at the wedding. That was a lot of fun. And, and I like when he made the Pharisees look like fools, and, and I was on board when he turned over the tables of the money changers there in the temple. And, and now he just performed that Panera bread miracle that just blew my mind. I mean, he didn't just feed us. He filled us to overflowing with food left over, man. Twelve baskets. I mean, our ancestor Moses fed us with manna, but we couldn't take any of that with us. And we assume now he has to be the prophet that has come, and he is the Messiah. And heck, I was ready to kill him king, but come on, this is kind of crazy. I mean, I was hungry for what came from his hand. But I wasn't hungry for him. I was hungry for what he was doing for me, but I wasn't really following because I was hungry to have him. Oh. And this was a sticking point for me this week. It really caused me to consider my own commitments. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But at some point, Jesus will always lead us to a place where we have to ask ourselves, am I following to know his heart or just to simply take from his hand? Where are you? Hmm? Maybe this is the day where you've experienced something less than favorable. You're going through something you can't wrap your mind around. You're trying to reconcile your faith from what you're, what you're experiencing, maybe what you've expected. And in those moments, Jesus is saying, come closer than you were before. I want to use this as a time for you to, have, to establish greater intimacy within me. And his invitation to intimacy shrunk the movement. And people were going, oh, my goodness. He's not just giving us bread. He's offering us himself, and it's strange. How can he deliver me if he's offering himself? Where are you? Where are you this morning? Where are you? Mind the menu. Because there isn't much on it when it, comes, when, when it comes to brass tacks, when the rubber meets the road. Jesus offers himself and wants you to know or wants you to respond as to whether or not that would be enough. Jesus says, though it be difficult and though it feels foreign, come to me. Come to me even though it hurts. Come to me even though you can't understand. Come to me even though you're confused. Come to me even though you're afraid. Come to me and come to me in a way that is decidedly different than when you came to me previously. Look at this church because it's important. As some were moving closer to, others were moving farther away. And I want to use that as a springboard to say that a deeper, that a deeper faith will almost always invoke a departure of something. A deeper faith in the Lord will almost always require another departure of something of you. And I don't know what that might be. And I don't have time to elaborate. But I'm really hoping the richness of this word will cause you to ponder what is that which has to go in order for you to come close. A deeper faith will always invariably do that. The two run in tandem. A deeper faith will always, always invoke a departure somewhere else. Could it be, church, that going deeper with Jesus also means a departure of the picture that you had perceived in your head about how life should go? And, and, and trusting that perhaps the Lord is prepared to help you see or experience something broader or bigger than you ever thought possible. But that's the challenge. Jesus says, don't, don't, don't just watch me. And don't just follow arbitrarily. 
Jesus says in this word, take me in. Don't just consider me. Consume me. When my word isn't just something you hear, but it becomes who you are. When the external is ingested and becomes internal, what you end up experiencing is what everyone else is after. You know what it is? Life. A life that they so desire but can't find outside of me. When you take me in, when you consume me, when, 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 when my word isn't just what you hear, but it becomes who you are, you end up experiencing life that you never had before. But I'm telling you right now, to do so, to go deeper, will be difficult. And given the scripture, as I close... It's evident that Jesus, Jesus, look at this church, Jesus doesn't care about the size of the crowd. He's never cared about the size of the crowd. He's always cared about the size of your commitment. And so the challenge is then what it is now. Can you commit to staying close to me? Can you commit to moving closer when it seems things are starting to collapse? Because our tendency is to depart when faith becomes difficult. But here's the thing. The times in which life feels like it's crumbling are the times in which the Lord desires to come close. And Jesus says to the disciples, when all other options are out, when that which you relied on before has now become unreliable, he says, Mind the menu. Mind the menu. What is the menu? Me in you. In you in me. Unless I'm in you. And you can walk in me. You won't have the life that you desire. The kind of life that sees transformation. And so Jesus looks to the disciples and he says, the twelve. It's the first time he's called them the twelve. Looks, looks to the twelve and says, are you going to leave too? What about you? You going to leave? What are you going to do? Peter said, in so many words, Jesus, look at the menu. <laughs> There's so many options. We don't have many options. You're the one who has the words of life, the wonderful words of life. We're all in. Even though it doesn't seem all right. We want to be in you. And so they stayed and they stuck around and they followed when life was less than favorable. And as they walked, they were able to bear witness to, to something that the Lord did in and through them that they never ever would have imagined. And I want to close by saying, if that's you today, don't depart. It actually might be an invitation of intimacy where the Lord desires you to come closer than you ever did before. We've come off of a year and a half that was unlike any other, and we're experiencing things in our community, in our world that is less than favorable. We're uncertain, but in the midst of things feeling like stuff starting to crumble, it's that time where Jesus has come closer. Mind your menu, because there aren't many options. That which you thought was reliable hasn't been reliable. It's got to be me in you and you in me. May we live it. May we display it. May it be so. And all of God's children said, amen. 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 Our response to the word is responsive. And Carol Carol is here. She's going to lead us in it. I'd like you to stand in solidarity in agreement, church, as we share this response. Before we go to the response, uh, there is one announcement. The flowers on the altar this morning are given by John and Bobby Nally in honor of Matt and Pam Nally's 11th anniversary on August 14th. 
and John and Bobby's 50th anniversary on August 21st. Now let's join in the response to the word. When the day becomes difficult, when there are no road signs to assure us we're on the right track, may we we muster muster the faith faith to follow. When our experiences don't square with what we expect, may May we we summon summon the strength to take take the next step step confident, confident, not not in our our ability to solve, but in God's God's grace to sustain. When doubt, disappointment, discouragement, division, or any other outside pressure would entice us to move farther from a relationship with the Lord and the world around us, may we commit commit to to moving moving closer and and thereby thereby better better emulate what what it means means to be the body body of Christ. Christ. May it be so as we ready ourselves for prayer. You may be seated. Before we engage in our time of prayer, church, uh, I'd like you to be cognizant of, uh, of a few things, and uh, then after that, please feel free to name specifically what it is that we as a body can bring together in prayer. Uh, we, we, want, 
We want Martha and Denny Hahn right now to know that we're praying for them ardently in, in a committed way as a body. Uh, Denny is in the hospital. He's experienced an infection, and some of the medicine that he's taken uh, to aid the infection has caused uh, some difficulties. And uh, Martha covers your prayers, as does he. Uh, and so to the extent that, that, that you can this week, I, I ask that you write them uh, and, and maybe even call, call Martha and, and, and offer her a word of encouragement or comfort uh, to, to let her know uh, she's not the only one navigating what she's navigating. I also was in conversation with Margie Carr this, this week, and uh, Margie laments that her dad and mom are, are now sick with COVID. And Marvin is struggling, and she says it's going to be a, a long road. And uh, she has posted that on social media and, and said it was okay for me to share with you. Uh, but, but we're at a place now, after a time in, in our county, where we're dealing with upkick, uh, upticks in Delta cases, and we want to be cognizant and mindful uh, of our brothers and sisters around us, even those who have been vaccinated, uh, who, are, who are experiencing uh, symptoms and who worry about extended family members who could be uh, devastated uh, by, by the virus. And I pray for our friends from our extended family, Chris Head and his wife. Chris is a younger guy who is on a ventilator uh, with, with COVID. And I want to pray for he and, and his family. It's amazing, though, it's amazing, church, though, in the midst of our petitions. And I know that you have them, how it is that God moves through us to be beacons of light and hope in the world and it takes not an army but but very small groups small invitations of hope and encouragement i've just come off of a seminar a conference that 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 teaches us how to expand a kingdom and it seems as we catalog the word jesus makes a practice of teaching how to slim down a crowd but works through those who commit to following. And those who commit to following, staying close to him, are the ones who end up with the Lord, seeing incredible things done through him. So those, those are petitions I'd like you to receive. Um, also, uh, I, want, I want you to verbalize uh, those as well. Are there, are there petitions of the heart that we can bring to prayer t together. Did you mention them? Yeah, Danita. My name is Dan. Yes, Jennifer and Mom Thank you. Could you say the name one more time? Dan. Dan. Thank you, Dan. Others. I saw another hand. Yes, uh, Lynn. Okay, Beth. Beth, Beth and Joe. Uh, given, given the echo sometimes, my age is 38, but my ears aren't 38. <laughs> Others? Yes, Mary? Or no, I, that's not Mary, it's Linda. My eyes aren't 38 either. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. where a congregation has our finger on the pulse of the world around us. And it's too easy in a very insulated way to say, well, that's them and this is us. That's a faraway issue. But as a connected body who spans the globe, we're ones who have an active interest uh, in, in the cares of our brothers and sisters around the world. And so we, we stand and very specifically pray over the people of Afghanistan uh, in, in the ways uh, in, in which our lives as, as a people impact them. Uh, those Christians there that have been there and uh, those Muslim children that are seeking solace and refuge. Yes, thank you. Others? I don't want to embarrass them. I thought about not even mentioning it, but uh, our brother Neil Lefwich, 
uh, our superintendent is new to the district, not new as a living space, but, but new as a leader in the district is here. And uh, John and Danita are sitting right next to him and may have written him a card and maybe not even matched a face. But he's here. And those of you who have written cards of welcome um, have the opportunity to, to, to greet him uh, as a, a, a new leader in this district. And we appreciate his gifts and his graces. He was with me last week for that conference on mission and uh, ministry. And I just want on behalf of Christ Church to uh, welcome you, Brother Neil, to the district and to this space of worship. God bless you. Welcome. They clap because they know you're not here to move me. <laughs> but we're glad that you're here. Thank you, Thank you for being here with us. Uh, others, praises, petitions. Yes, Lynn. Amen. Thank you. We praise God for that as well. Let's join in prayer, church, as we close. Holy God, silence in a space like these is alien to us. And it's somewhat alarming because it shows us how much our life is filled with noise. It is hard to disconnect or to steal away because oftentimes by virtue of the dings and the sounds and the beeps that are on our wrists and our pockets always have us on. But we've decidedly this morning, Lord, stole away to enter into your presence. And in oftentimes less than favorable spaces in our private lives, in this community, in our, in our world around us, when, when it seems as though uh, pockets and places of our world are collapsing and things are falling apart and seem unstable, it's those periods of time that you desire a greater commitment to you. That, that, that our faith in you and following you wouldn't just be a side item on a list of larger priorities but that we would canvas our lives and see you as the center, that we would mind our menus and of all the options that, on which we've leaned, on, on which we've, we've leveraged in the past year. Many of us have come into this place proclaiming that you are a king in our lives, but nonetheless sought our portfolios or our careers or our affiliations or our platforms. And, and what a pandemic did was to, put to, was to pull all of that out from underneath of us to take it all away. And Lord, we don't believe that you cause those things, but you invariably use experiences for us to, to be able to do some self-inventory and reflection to understand that when all is taken away, there is one thing on our menus that remains, and it's you. We don't, we're not as interested in the things that come from your hand as we are in you, Lord. We don't want your hand we're hungry for your heart. And Lord, we seek to emulate that in everything that we say and do. So help us to leave this place as a people who bear burdens, who are frustrated, who are concerned about what happened or what might. To leave these places concerned but not consumed. And by virtue of the opportunities you provide us, to so take you in, to ingest your word, that it not become what we hear, but it becomes who we are. That we be consumed by you, consumed with you, so that we might be consumed by being your body, your visible and tangible hands and feet in the world, proliferators of life, the life that you intend on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, have your way over our petitions, all that we named out loud and in our hearts, all the brothers and sisters that are joining us electronically who are in prayer with us right now, whatever it is that they're experiencing or what they are dealing with now, we commit to you for your care and keeping. We approach your throne of mercy with the confidence of children, Lord, to walk and to witness even when it becomes difficult. Have your way over our petitions, and Lord, you're worthy of our praise. 
We commit it all to you to enable us to be a body, a living body that moves and breathes transformation in life here and around the world. For restoration, for salvation and healing in each heart and life, we pray it be done according to your watch and your way and in your will. And we pray as your Son and our Savior has taught us all to pray, say, Our Father, Brothers and sisters, let's stand, will you? And uh, before we uh, join in our, in our closing hymn, uh, I want to leave you with some opportunities. I use it as a time now as opposed to as an announcement because they're not an announcement as much as they're opportunities for witness and mission. You know, our brothers and sisters at YSS are gathering book bags to give the children who are beginning school who can't supply the resources on their own. I want you to be privy to those. Uh, be mindful of the sheet that I gave you for Kingdom Keys. There, there are opportunities for witness and ministry ongoing at the House of the Carpenter that we can get plugged into. That we don't just, we don't just come and consume, but we're consumed with being the live, live, living, tangible body of Christ. Be mindful in your own spaces as you go of the billboard opportunities you have to shine Christ's light. May it be so with us that people could see a menu and not many options. You in Christ, in Christ in you. Let us sing. Let us be bread. Let us be bread. I'm going to sing that once for you. We're going to sing it three times. It's a small chorus. I'll sing it once for you, and we'll sing it together the second and third times. Let's sing. <clears throat> Let us be bread. Blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. Let us be. Now that you know, make it your prayer. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, open and share life for the world. Let us be wine, love free for. Let us be one in the Lord. Now for our sending forward. As we leave this place of worship, we walk into a wandering world that is wondering, where do we go? To what or to whom can we turn to discover what it means to be truly live? May it May be, be Christ, Christ in us, us and Christ, Christ through us, us that, that the, the world, world around us finds find true food and is filled to overflowing. overflowing. Let it be so, go in peace, go hungry for the opportunity to share the gospel. Amen.